Well, this has just changed rapidly within the past five or ten minutes. We have confirmed with police that the man who was barricaded inside. I'm going to step out of the frame here and let you all take a look at the scene. Right now, this garage that you see in this house here on University Avenue, that's sort of the nexus of this investigation. It's still very much an active scene. We have not been given too much information from fire and police officials right now. But what we do right know right now is basically what we can see here. This house here on the 7800 block of Stratton Way is gone. This drive through line is stretched pretty deep here at the Culver's on Cottage Grove Road. Lots of people here, and believe me, the lines inside are even longer. A piece of lumber just went through, impaled it as it was flying through these storms. You can also see this beacon here knocked to the ground. But let's come over here, and if you want to see something even more extreme than this, this is a hangar. The hail itself was pretty small. You can see there's still a little bit of it left here on the ground. Here, people just leaving their car doors unlocked and people coming in, seeing what's inside, seeing if there's anything they could steal, maybe a cell phone. And I thought was seeing that rain. Ooh, there might not be a good turnout tonight, but I think this crowd here speaks for itself. It is packed as ever. Deputies are now using their eyes in the sky to help with search and rescue missions. I'm Chris Gosner at Miller Park in for Eden today, and I am taking a swing at the morning show. Waters continue to rise here in Laval as Sauk County hopes for the best, but prepares for the worst. As Jean Snyder snips and shaves inside her Laval barber shop, More rain tonight, huh? everything seems normal, but she can't help but think about the rising waters just outside of its walls and what might come with them. It's just overwhelming. The Baraboo River showing no signs of stopping its ascent, coming right into her shop's basement. When I came to work, the water wasn't even going in the, to the basement area, and now it's probably 8 to 10 inches in there. And they've been down there turning off hot water heaters and the, um, breakers and stuff for electricity. <laughs> and as Snyder prepares, so does the rest of this small town. I'm spending most of the morning getting all my uh, equipment and stuff out of my lower shed. With memories of 2008 still fresh in their minds. Hoping that it doesn't get as bad as it did in 2008. Sock emergency officials say now is the time to be ready for whatever the rivers may bring. Everybody's going to be prepared, especially the folks that are near the river, the Baraboo River or the Wisconsin River. Take the time now to get the sandbagging going. Again. That sandbagging serving as a head start as Sauk County shores up its defenses against a southward stream. And they got nailed up north, and that water is going to take time to come down here. You know, you, it's, it's going to be a couple days until the river even crests around Laval in that area. It's just a wait and see battle. In addition to here in Laval, Sauk County officials have sandbag sites going in Reedsburg, West Baraboo, and Lake Delton. Reporting in Laval, Chris Gothner, WISC News 3. I was cleaning the house and I heard a huge bang. It was the sound that rocked Stacy Aparicio Smith's Wednesday afternoon. The whole house shook and I live about maybe an eighth of a mile away and I went out to see my mom was helping clean the porch and I said, did you drop something? She goes, it was a little bit bigger than that. She walked outside instantly stunned by what she discovered. Just saw smoke billowing up from behind the neighborhood. Just before 205, our first responders arrived on scene and uh, found a total totally destructed uh, home. Madison firefighters battled the flames emanating from the rubble. Officials say one firefighter got hurt and another person was hurt in the explosion. Both are expected to be okay. Firefighters still don't know if anyone was inside that Stratton Way house though as a search and rescue operation went on alongside the very start of what looks to be a lengthy investigation. They have to work through the process of, of really piecing back together the house and they, they won't do it on scene but they have to document everything. They have to go through every piece of insulation. Right now, firefighters say people living in eight nearby homes aren't able to get back in as the investigation continues. No doubt neighbors want to know what caused this to happen, but answers may not come anytime soon. We're a long way from making a determination. Stacy Aparicio Smith wanting answers too as she looked on at a scene of destruction. This is so sad. This is just awful. In a city that celebrates its Nordic heritage, where even the high school sports teams are known as the Vikings, Dave Moschel of Stoughton found out the hard way that being a fan of the other Vikings Five and old, man. isn't always easy in Wisconsin. Here, I'm slicing this guy up and come outside and, hey, what are you doing? Confront the guy and he takes this razor knife or whatever he had in his hand and uh, we just 
go on the ground and start wrestling around. Police arrested a 21-year-old man. They say vandalized Moschel's Viking inflatable and stabbed him seven times following that confrontation. He probably thought it was funny and maybe his buddies thought it would be cool to come slice it up. That man faces tentative charges of reckless endangerment and criminal damage to property. I hope this kid gets what's coming to him. Today, Moschel says he's doing a lot better and says he's lucky to be alive and so is the man who stabbed him. Luckily, uh, I didn't have my concealed carry on me at the time. So I, you know, normally 99% of the time I leave house, I never leave without it. And this is the one time I'm dead. I, I kind of glad I did because that kid would have been dead and I'd had to live with that. And the father of six says nothing or no one will keep him from showing pride in his favorite team. This is, this is going to get a little piece of uh, Vikings duct tape put on there <laughs> and it's going to be blown up every day of the week from now on. I'm still here, still living, still watching football. Tell me the address of the emergencies. It's the first question you're asked on the call you never want to have to make. And that hasn't changed much over the years. But two decades ago, when dispatchers answered a 911 call, it likely came from a good old-fashioned landline. But in 2017... The cell phone calls are about 75 to 80% of our calls now. In a lot of ways, Dane County 911 operations manager Paul Logan says that's allowed dispatchers to get people help faster. You were lucky to get one call on a major crash. Today, you give a crash at Odana Road and Whitney Way, you know, and it's halfway serious, we're going to get a dozen calls within minutes. But there's one way cell phones haven't caught up. Landline calls come with an exact address, so even when someone doesn't know where they are, emergency crews can still find them. Cell phone 911 location technology isn't there yet. They may assume that when they call 911, we know precisely where they're located or where they're calling from. And we don't necessarily know precisely where they're calling from. Now with smartphones, apps like Uber and Google Maps seemingly give us precise locations. So we decided to see where today's 911 location technology stands right here in Dane County. We rounded up four cell phones from four major carriers and sent our intern downtown to make a few 911 calls. He stood at the corner of State and Carroll while I watched the calls come in at the 911 center. Dispatchers knew we'd be calling, but they didn't know where we'd be calling from. What one is this? This is AT&T. Right here, guys. Our first carrier test, AT&T. Like most cell calls, the data comes into the dispatcher in two phases. First, what tower it hits. 316 West Washington Avenue. Then an approximate location of the call using data from satellite GPS or from triangulation, measuring a signal based on its distance from multiple towers. The key word here is approximate. Eventually, that data placed our call a few feet away from the right spot. Data from U.S. Cellular also gave a close location right away. So that one's feet away. And Verizon got pretty close, too. But then we get to Sprint. It first hit a cell tower on Braxton, but that Phase 2 data was also off the mark. Oh, looks like at the end of Lake Long Lake Place. Lake Long Place, okay. That's nearly half a mile away from State and Carroll. So if a caller had no idea where they were, first responders wouldn't have a close idea either. It's yeah. uh, it's already a Phase 2. So It's so, not going to improve the location. So that was that location a couple blocks away. That was as good as it got there for Sprint. Yes. Wow. After finishing our calls, we had our intern get a ride back to class on Uber. Its driver found him right there. So why is it that Uber can find you, but 911 can't? We're still relying on essentially 1960s technology. After being routed from a cell tower, Logan says data from the call ultimately comes into the center through old-fashioned copper wire phone lines. The center considers that technology bulletproof. It rarely fails. But it doesn't allow for dispatchers to get the kind of rich data that they'd like to. Apps like Uber, on the other hand. The phone apps uh, primarily are relying on uh, the public Internet. The problem with that is, unlike the tried-and-true wired system, the Internet is much more prone to things like data outages. So if you were to call a, uh, an Uber car, you may or may not get through. It's not public safety mission critical reliable. Ultimately, Director John DeYoung says federal 911 guidelines in the coming years will incorporate broadband data to augment what it already receives from cell carriers. The takeaway from all this, dispatchers say, is when you need to dial 911, still the most important thing to know and to tell the dispatcher is where you are, because your cell phone might not. I've always said don't bet your life on the technology.
Now we reached out to Sprint and Uber. If you'd like to see each company's responses to our story, you can visit fox47.com. Also on our website, you'll learn why Dane County 911 officials say Wisconsin's 911 system is lagging behind other states.